Hey friend, Graham Cochran here, and welcome back to our mini series on how to build an online course that's profitable, puts money in your pocket, and helps out a ton of people. Again, there are so many people making online courses, and most of them are crap, and most of them don't sell anyway. So this series is designed to help you avoid all of that. Now, we've already covered a lot of the basics. You, At this point, if you've done all the stuff we've covered, you've built your course. Or maybe you haven't watched any of the videos, but you have already designed and filmed your course, and it's ready, but you don't know how to sell it how to distribute it online, what tools do you need to use, how do you collect payment, what's the best way to automate the whole process. I'm gonna break all of that down for you, super practical, in today's video. So when you finally built your first online course and you're ready to sell it, you're going to need three elements to pull this off. A sales page, a payment processor, and a digital distribution tool or service, okay? And once in place, all of the selling and the distribution will happen automatically, which is a huge reason why I love digital products like online courses. So today what I wanna do is walk you through these three elements, tell you what you need to use and how to set it up in the best way possible. So let's start with the sales page. This is basically where people are learning about your course. And so if you have a WordPress or a Squarespace website already for your blog or for your site or your, your, um, you know, your content, then the easiest thing to do is just start there. Make a dedicated page, WordPress or Squarespace, that highlights the benefits, keyword, of your course. And then include a buy now button, which will link to your payment processor. And I'll talk about that in a second. So it's really just... Um, a, you know, it's like a details on the product. I like a page that is really clear, that's really stripped down, no other distractions, no sidebar, no mention about your blog. It's just the only thing on this page is information and sales copy about the course. So it's positioned well, who it's for, what it does, what result will it get, what are the benefits of your course? Very, very important. And then of course at the end, a button they can click or multiple buttons so they if they're ready to buy they can buy it so you can design this very quickly and easily wherever you already host your website now another option is something called lead pages and there's other competitors like it too but it's a quick and easy way to build dedicated sales pages right so you can use templates that are drag and drop that make simple one page websites that are already hosted on their server so you can use this in addition to your WordPress site, like I do that. I have uh, my websites on WordPress and I even have some sites on Squarespace, but um, my sales pages are using dedicated things like lead pages, um, where when you click over to the sales page, it's something that I've created over there and it gives you all the information about uh, the course. This is not free, but it's something if you want a little bit more you know, customization and flexibility, it's a great tool. It does the exact same thing. So at the bottom of that page or somewhere on that page, they want to click it. They want to click buy now. Well, this is where you need a payment process or a way to capture their information and get paid, right? So two of the biggest payment processors out there are PayPal and Stripe, right? And I use both of these, have used both of these. And you can create a free account with both of these and link it to your business checking account where you already accept money. And what it allows you to do is accept credit and debit cards, and it's a free service to use. There's no membership fee, but what they do is anytime you have a transaction and only when you have a transaction, they take the standard 2.9% credit card fee, right? Which they don't get to keep. That goes to Visa and MasterCard and American Express and Discover. Um, but when what they take is 30 cents per transaction, right? Which is amazing. Um, so that's how they stay in business is their 30 cents and then they're passing on the 2.9% to the credit card company. But that's the price to pay if you want to be able to accept credit or debit cards. So it's pretty standard um, and you'll wanna set that up for free and just link it all to your bank account information. So once it's in place, you never have to really mess with the back end of this and Stripe automatically deposits money to your business checking account every couple of days. Uh, PayPal is like uh, purgatory. <laughs> it holds your money for you. It's like an additional bank account and you can manually transfer that money into your bank account whenever you want um, so that it's yours to use. And I've used PayPal for years and years and years. And these days I primarily use Stripe for my online courses. 
So that's the second element, payment processor. Now, the third and final element you need, which is very, very important, is digital distribution. You need a way for when people buy your online course for them to actually get access to it and get access to it automatically. So two great places to start are eJunkie and SendOwl. And both of these services, you have a low monthly fee and it's usually between $5 and $20 depending on how much you need and what features you need. And what it does is it allows you to have your products immediately emailed, your course immediately emailed to your customer the moment payment goes through. So it's really cool. They send a zip file or zip files to their inbox and they can download all the videos to the course instantly. Um, and it's great because it integrates with PayPal um, or it can integrate with Stripe so that you can have a buy now button that's connected to all of this so it knows what to do. The moment they enter their credit card information um, successfully and PayPal or Stripe sees a successful payment, then it automatically communicates with eJunk or send out and says, okay, go ahead and send them the video files. And they get an email, they can download it. You don't have to be present at all. Okay, now my favorite platform for digital distribution, and I've used both of these in the past though, but what I use these days is Kajabi. And I've talked about this before, and I'll probably continue to talk about Kajabi because it's just freaking amazing. Um, it's more expensive. It's gonna run you at least $100 a month for the lowest package, but it does so much more than just distribute your products. You really have to take a look at it and see if it's what you need. It might be overkill for what you need to get started, but if you're really gonna do a lot of online courses, this is gonna be great for you because what it gives you is an online portal for your customers. So instead of downloading your course, they can log in on any device, phone, tablet, computer, your friend's computer, and they can stream your course wherever, whenever they want. On top of that, they can see all of their courses that they have bought from you in one place. It gives you like a customer library, which is great to get their own unique login. When they log in, if they've bought two or three or four of your courses, they see them all there, almost like your Kindle books or whatever you've purchased. And they can just log in with one click to whichever of the courses they wanna log into. They can see how much progress they've made, they can ask you questions directly uh, underneath each video and interact with you. Um, it integrates with Stripe and PayPal. You can do upsells that are one click. Uh, if they've already bought from you in the past and you have a new course, they never have to enter the credit card again because they've already logged in. They can just one click buy your next course because it saves an encrypted version of their credit card information. Again, they don't have it, but it's saved and encrypted like Amazon or any place you do repeat business. It's a great platform. It allows you to make sales pages like lead pages. It's all included for free. Um, I'm using Kajabi now for all my uh, sales pages and landing pages. It can do email stuff. It's insane. You get so much uh, baked into Kajabi. I'm a, I'm a huge evangelist for Kajabi because I really believe it's a tool that I wish I had when I started making online courses and it's now the complete best solution out there. So if you start to make even an ounce of money with your online courses, I highly recommend upgrading to Kajabi, but you don't have to do it to make money selling online courses. I sold online courses. I was doing multiple six figures using eJunkie for the first three, four years of my business. And I spent like $18 a month. So of course you can get started with that, but I just want to let you know about my favorite, favorite option. Now that's all you need to sell and distribute your online course. Sales page, you can make for free. Payment processor for free. Digital distribution will run you at least five bucks a month. But a bigger question that you might be asking, because I know I get it a lot, is how should I price my course? How much should I be charging? And man, I, I answer this question a lot. And I think if you're starting out, you're going to get answers from a bunch of different people. And the answers will be all over the map. Because when I started making courses, you could buy a course in my niche for $25 and it was hours and hours of HD footage. And to me, that's insanely low. Um, and you know why I think that's low? I think it's low because it undercuts the value. You could buy a book for 25 bucks, and a video course is way more valuable than a book because it is longer, more in-depth, and they're teaching you the concepts uh, as opposed to just you reading a book. So I always thought that that $25 price range was ridiculous for an online course, but let me let me give you a quick 
rule of thumb answer that I think will serve you well. And it's not my own rule of thumb. I, I have agreed with it and I've already been there, but I learned it after I started making courses. And it comes from good old Tim Ferriss of the four hour work week fame. And like him and like many people, I agree you should be a premium provider in your niche. If you're going to make an online course, it better be between 50 and $200 minimum. So basically what I'm saying is $50 should be the absolute minimum you price your online course, in my opinion. You can do whatever you want, but there's two reasons for this. One, if you play in the sub $50 sandbox, you're going to get sub $50 customers, and they're the worst. No offense if you have those customers or if you buy stuff that's under $50, but if you're selling an online course for less than $50, bucks, you are going to get people that complain. You're going to get people that want refunds all the time. You're going to get people that wish you included more. They will demand more from you than people that paid $50 to $200 for a course. Trust me, I know. I've run tests and experiments on the same course, priced it at sub $50 and above $50, and the refunds drop when you get above $50, and the customer satisfaction increases when you get above $50. So I say if you're starting out, $50 to $200 is the simple sweet spot where you'll make the most money. You'll be a premium provider in your niche. And uh, people don't have to think too hard about spending between 50 and 200 bucks. That being said, depending on the nature of the course, what the content is and what value it brings, online courses can easily sell for $500 to $2,000, okay? And I've done this as well. So it just depends on what you're teaching and who it's for and what value that brings. Uh, a course, for example, on recording guitar and your band might be a $150 course. And that might be the value for that to somebody because it's a hobby. But a course that teaches you how to make six figures in online passive income might be worth closer to $2,000 because they're going to make money off of that information. So it just depends on the nature of the course. Um, you can certainly go up to and over $2,000 for an online course. So think premium. Don't, don't shortchange yourself. Don't think you're going to put in all this work and make an amazing course, all the stuff I've talked about in this series, and do all that work and make it amazing and then only charge $19. Please don't do that. It's just an awful idea. There's no profit margin that's worth it for you. Your customers aren't going to be good customers. They're not going to get great results. It's actually an awful idea for everybody involved. Trust me when I say be at least $50, but 50 to 200 is a sweet spot, and you can easily do 500 to 2,000 if you're in the right niche. All right, little gift for you before you go. I've put together an entire guide, a checklist on everything I know about making courses that make six figures to seven figures. It's called my six-figure online course checklist. I want to give it to you for free. Just go to sixfigurecourse.com, download it as my gift to you for watching this video. It's going to cover a lot of the material that I'm covering in this mini-series, and it puts it all together in a simple-to-read, quick-to-reference checklist that's bullet points. It's do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. I've put out Dozens of online courses. Many of them are doing six figures and a few are doing seven figures, million dollar courses. And I've learned a lot. I've made some bad ones, some that I don't sell anymore because they really aren't that great. And from what I've made, the mistakes I've made, and then what I've seen that has worked, I've put it all together from how to conceptualize your ideas and outline your courses, what to include, how to film them, how to launch them, how to get great testimonials, all of that inside this guide, and it's absolutely free as my gift to you for watching these videos. So go grab your copy of the Six Figure Online Course Checklist at sixfigurecourse.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to these videos, and I'll see you on the next video in this series.